and an explosive day it's been worldwide, the FIFA scandal, and a guy that I'm sure has been watching, reading, and listening like I have, Paul Atfield of the Globe and Mail. Paul, welcome, my friend. Thank you very much, Anthony. Unbelievable day. I don't know where to start as I was speaking to Dwayne Rollins of the Canadian Soccer News. So many storylines to cover. Let's get to the UK angle. As I said before we took the commercial break, I got a feel uh, for England not getting a World Cup because as I said to you before in the past, Paul, I think they earned it. They deserve it. World-class facilities, world-class security, on and on. And now we're starting to see all the chips starting to fall. How is this playing out in the UK today? Well, I think the Guardian actually, uh, you know, had a very good phrase uh, uh, in their editorial today. They said it's prob- it's it's the uh, it's the ugliest day in the history of the beautiful game, and uh, you know, and you could argue that 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 may well be true. I mean, it's never before has uh, you know, if you look at FIFA as the should be the guiding light of the game, it should be the, one of the guardians of the game, you know, protector of you know the world's most popular sport, and and this is the the IOC, you know, the equivalent. It's the, the thing that kind of drives the game forward and acts in the game's best interest. But yet, as it seems to turn out, like none of that is true. I mean, they've done everything possible to line their own pockets at the expense of you, me, and every other soccer fan around the world. You know, Paul, what's really interesting on all the things that are taking place today, two of them, a Warner and Webb, come from this region, CONCACAF. And here, to me, it's really surprising why. And, and we know why, because Sepp Blatter doesn't have a lot of support uh, from the European nations. He doesn't have a lot of support, safe to say, from uh, some of the South American nations. So is this a surprise to you, Warner and Webb, going down the way they did? Not at all. I mean, you know, I mean, Jack Warner has been a uh, uh, a, a punching bag for the BBC, I mean, since since the 2006 World Cup. I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's been a number of investigations into the guy, because I think a lot of British journalists look at him as, as being very much a right-hand man. Obviously, you know, he's not with FIFA anymore in an ongoing capacity, but uh, the guy clearly, you know, through a number of investigations, seemed to have made an enormous amount of money by selling TV rights uh, to various World Cups. Uh, and now, I, you know, I had sort of interview with him today, and he's saying, well, you know, these are just allegations. Uh, allegations are allegations. Uh, I'll have my say in court. Uh, and right now I'm just concerned with uh, uh, running a political party. So... Uh, you know, he's. I think he feels he's removed from the fact, and, and it doesn't. Maybe uh, uh, he's st- he's still as as indignant as ever that that he's ever done anything wrong. Uh, you know, and I think that's. I mean, that's the the number one word of the day is denial. I mean, FIFA to come out and say, "Oh no, we've had a good day." It's like, well, what does a bad day look like then? I mean, <laughs> this clearly is not a good day. I mean, this is probably the worst day uh, FIFA's ever had. But yet, you can still stand there. And act as though, you know, the show must go on and the Congress is on and, you know, and they still think Blatter will be voted in for a fifth term on Friday. So, um, but, you know, for me as, a, uh, as an Englishman, I'm very interested to see what, what happens with the World Cups now because obviously, with that in reference to the 2018 in Russia and 2022 in Qatar, because, uh, I mean, England, I, I think a lot of people, and you and I have had this conversation, were, you know, robbed to, or not given a fair chance to to win that 2018 World Cup, just as uh, you know, Australia and America, in, in hindsight, weren't given a fair shout to, to compete for the 2022. So uh, I know Qatar has been very indig- uh, very strong by saying, you know, we'll, we will sue if this is taken away. But if it's found out that everything was awarded on the basis of bribes, then how else do you go about this other than taking them away? Unbelievable. It's been a day of ups and downs and a roller coaster ride and something that I don't think a lot of people have discussed. I haven't heard anyone discuss it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to ask you this, Paul. I haven't heard some of the big companies, sponsors of World Cups and of FIFA, come out and make statements. We heard the CSA make their statement, the U.S. Soccer Federation, MLS, on and on and on. I've yet to hear from some big companies. Have you? No, I I mean, you're right. I mean, and that would be, I mean, that that has to be the next step if, if, if Blatter is going to be removed because let's face it i mean you know if we're going to have a a do-over and a new starting point he can't be part of the 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 solution he's been massively part of the problem and i know he comes out and he he always says oh you know what this is uh exactly what we were doing when we said we were trying to you know weed out corruption but you can't still be in charge of it i mean you you've clearly seem to have turned a blind eye to all this stuff uh and allow it to go on under your leadership well that that First of all, that raises huge red flag over the caliber of your leadership. So Blatter has to go, and I think 
the people that put all that money into FIFA, you know, the I, I, I can't name them. I mean, I could name them, but I don't want to get it wrong. So, um, you know, the big corporations that do sponsor the World Cups and, and sponsor FIFA have to turn around and say, you know, we're pulling the plug. We cannot do this anymore. Where do we go from here, Paul? I mean, to me, uh, you know, who's running against St. Blatter? I mean, I think it's only one individual. I was really looking forward to Luis Figo making a serious run at Blatter, maybe even Platini. But right now, he's got no one really that's going to threaten his position unless they kick him out. Well, I think at this point, you, you really have to, you know, put that on the back burner, delay it, you know, sort, process this, uh, this crisis at the moment. And, and down the road, if, you know, if we decided, and, and I think Greg Dyke, the, uh, the, the FA uh, chairman, uh, you know, has said, we, you know, Blatter has to go one way or the other, whether we vote him out, whether the corporation's demand he goes out, or we find another way. He has to go for this to move forward. Uh, and I think once he goes, I think the only way possible to move forward is to get, like you said, and I'm not even sure if Michel Platini is sufficiently, um, you know, he's been in the system now for a while. I think a, a guy like Luis Figo, like you say, a guy that really is about the game on the field first and foremost, uh, but you really need a, a you know, a, a game, a sporting figure, somebody that people can relate to, uh, people know that played the game the right way and, and was good at it. It has to be a guy that's an on-the-field guy to, to really restore people's trust in that organization. I would have no problem whatsoever putting Sunil Galati in charge of CONCACAF uh, taking over. I think this is a, a top-class gentleman, a guy that is a leader, a visionary. I think he's pretty honest and down-to-earth. I mean, to me, I think this is a key piece of the puzzle moving forward. Chuck Blazer, I mean, what can you say about this and everything that has come out from that situation, Paul? Well, I mean, it seems clearly, he, I mean, he's the guy that's provided a lot of the information that's led to uh, the FBI making, making the arrest today. I mean, it, it's, uh, he, was, he was found out. He, he owed a lot of taxes. So he became the whistleblower and, and became an informant. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously part of the problem, but also he's been part of the solution. So I'm not, not giving him credit, but uh, I, I think, you know, he's a, he's a key player in, in why we are where we are today. I didn't, un I didn't understand this part. And maybe you can explain it better than I, Paul, but I, I never can understand how they can extradite someone from Switzerland to the U.S. of A. Me, I'm not into all these legal things, but did you know that they were able to do that? Uh, I, I, I did. To, I mean, obviously, I've got no basis of, 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 I've got no real interest in reading about that kind of stuff outside of its relevance to football. But, but apparently, uh, as I understood it, the Swiss and the U.S. have an understanding that they can extract between companies as long as it's not, it's not to do with taxes. I think, uh, and this isn't to do with taxes. So it's to do with uh, fraud and bribery and, and other things. That, that I, I think it's taxes. Don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, but. Uh, there's, there's one loophole, but these, none of these things fall into that loophole. So Another interesting part of the day to me, a, a real interesting part of the day to me, was the NESL and the situation there, traffic sports and other things that are coming out from, you know, that explosive day uh, from FIFA headquarters. I mean, it's hit North America and it's hit it with a sledgehammer, Paul. Unbelievable to think NESL, traffic sport, on and on. And, and, and it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't think there's any place in the world where this this shouldn't really uh, shouldn't really hit home. I mean, this this uh, you know it's crazy on a day that uh, you know the, the Europa League finals on that, that this is really you know Man City's here tonight to play Toronto FC. I mean, there's so much good going on in terms of actual events on the field that that it, all anyone can talk about is what's happening in a in a hotel in Switzerland and and. Uh, the ramifications it's going to have for the game, and uh, you know, today, tomorrow, you know, hopefully five, ten years from now, that uh, well, we can, you know, this it, it's unbelievable to me because everyone knows it's been going on and nobody's been able to stop them, and they've been sitting there like the, the Cheshire Cat with a grin on the face, uh, thinking that nobody's ever going to catch them, and they've just been brazen uh, with their with their actions and. It's about time that, that they were caught out because it, it, it's been blatantly obvious and patently obvious to everyone that follows football around the world that this is, this is the case. And, and 
it's led to ridiculous decisions like the Qatar World Cup in 2022. I couldn't agree with you more. Paul, just before we let you go, Man City's in town, as you said, against TFC in a friendly. What are the players saying? What have you heard from players from Man City and some of the TFC players? Have you had a chance to listen since this has been all going down? Because I was at the Kia Training Center, the TFC's the training grounds there, and it was all a buzz before a PDL game. I mean, everybody was talking about it, whether it's players warming up, coaches, you name it, everybody was talking about it. What about down there? Well, I mean, you see, uh, I can't, uh, I mean, there's, you look at the players as they got off the bus, uh, the Man City players, uh, and they got their headphones on, and, and, and I know that's not unusual, that's the same as any Premier League game, but this isn't a Premier League game, this is a, this is a, uh, uh, a cash grab. A, a, well, no, <laughs> I, I won't even say that, because this is from, uh, as, as a, uh, a Globe colleague of mine, Cahal Kelly, wrote today that, that you know they're not even making any money. This isn't when Real Madrid came and they, they got a, a million dollars, whatever. I mean, not that Man City need the money, because they don't. This is about their brand, their image. This is about gaining more fans. I know they had a, a, a four of the players, Mike Summerby, a legendary uh, Man City player, and, and George Best, best man for his wedding, uh, were up at Opera Bob's yesterday for like a meet and greet with the Man City uh, supporters club over here. So it's really about... Um, you know, spreading the word, and I think it's for Man City to try and close the gap uh, in terms of support, especially in this era of social media, uh, with the likes of Man United and, and Chelsea and Arsenal, Liverpool. Um, you know that that's so important for them going forward because you know they haven't had the the, the massive great success in recent history that those other four clubs have had because you know they were down in the, in, the, in the, the third flight of football. Uh, as recently as, I, I think, uh, what, 16, 17 years ago. So uh, they've been playing catch-up, and, and, and this is great for them. Uh, great, and obviously, there are a lot of Man City fans in this town, as you know. So uh, it's great for them to see these guys, and, and you know whether they play 45 minutes or, or whatever, it, it's, it's probably the only chance you get to see them at BMO Field uh, uh, in the near future. What's also great, Paul, it's great to see today worldwide newspapers like yours, the Globe and Mail, all over the UK, Italy, Spain, all over the world, people are picking up newspapers and reading them about this massive explosive story. I love that because as a young man growing up here in Canada, I read all the dailies here and I enjoy still picking up a paper and reading them. I don't know about you. I don't mind going online reading stories, but I still like the feel of that paper, flipping through it and reading. And I think that does a lot for your industry today. Well, I think the other thing to bear in mind is, I mean, obviously, with, with space being fine at the newspaper, when it gets to the front page, um, it, it's making a statement that this is, the, whether it's the Globe, the Toronto Sun, the Star, that we feel this is an important story that needs to be, needs to be read and needs to be known. So, uh, you know, obviously, for many, many years, hockey will be front and center, uh, particularly in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, but, but, you know, times are changing, I guess.